Today sa Power ng Pinoy, Florante Aguilar. Pero ang mga harista, iba yung style nila. Talagang earnest lang. Because they're so humble. They came from humble origin. When they sing, it gets reflected. Christian Kabuay. By buying to me is about self-discovery. Through by buying, I've been able to discover my language, my history, the history around the Philippines. It's opened my eyes to many different things. Florante at Christian. Mga alagad ng sining at kultura sa diwa at sa gawa. Pilipino. Yan ang power ng Pinoy. Welcome to Power ng Pinoy. Ako po si Abby Vergonia. And I'm Jessica Kabuay. Ang Power ng Pinoy ay success stories ng ating mga kababayan dito sa Amerika. Mga kwentong magbibigay inspirasyon sa ating pagsusumikap na makamit ang ating mga pangarap sa buhay. And for our two special guests today, success is about knowing their purpose in life giving their best to achieve the goal so others may enjoy the fruits of hard work. One is to champion Philippine music, and the other, to promote a long-forgotten writing system. Samahan niyo kami ni Abby na pakinggan ang romantikong musika ng harana, ang magbasa at magsulat sa pamamagitan ng baybayin o higit na kilala sa tawag na alibata. All these and more sa pagbabalik ng, ng Power ng Pinoy. Pinoy. Welcome back to Power ng Pinoy. Our first story is about a man who was exposed to music at an early age and was later mentored by an internationally recognized Filipino guitarist, Michael Dada. As a performer, he traveled the world and played all kinds of music. But the music that is closest to his heart is a traditional courtship song, a serenade or harana. For classical guitar artist Florante Aguilar, this is the kind of music he loves and would like to be remembered by. Florante was raised in Cavite, south of Metro Manila. Nung lumaki ako sa Kawit, meron akong uh, neighbor. Uh, meron silang hardinero. Uh, tumutugtog siya ng rondalia. Kada fiesta, inibitahan niya ako sa bahay niya. Kinukumbira niya yung mga iba niyang kaibigan na mga matatanda na, mga 60s, 70s, pero mga master rondalia sila. We play, and I'm only nine years old, and I'm playing rondalia with them. Ang unang niyang gitara, regalo sa atin niya. Matagal na siya nagpapabili ng gitara sa tatay ko. Nung finally, binili na siya ng gitara, hindi siya marunong tumugtog, at hindi siya marunong magtono. Pero sabi ko, ate, akin na, susubukan kong itono. So, in about 30 seconds, tinono ko, even though I haven't played that instrument ever in my life. That's kind of how I got introduced to the guitar. I already knew how to tune it without knowing how to play. Like every other kid who first learns to play, his first guitar piece was truly profound. Meron akong kaklase noon na five years older sa akin. Meron siyang gumitara. He was playing this tune called Stairway to Heaven by Mid Zeppelin. Hey, you gotta teach me that. So, uh, so he, taught, he taught me how to play the, you know, the starting picks and pluckings of Stairway to Heaven and then from then on I, I learned to play more finger style technique on the guitar as opposed to strumming. Florante's early attachment to the guitar blossomed into a desire for formal education. At tinanggap ito ng kanyang ama na minsang nangarap na magiging engineer ang anak tulad niya. When I said I wanted to go to the conservatory, particularly at UP Conservatory of Music, and sabi niya, <laughs> Samahan kita sa audition. Sa UP Conservatory of Music, naging aktibo si Florante sa UP Guitar Ensemble. As part of the UP Guitar Ensemble, I spent a lot uh, touring uh, 
of course, I spent a lot of classes too. But mahaba yung tour namin, six and a half months. Punta kami Australia, punta kami Europe, iba ibang probinsya ng Pilipinas. As a student, Florante traveled the world, playing and listening to all kinds of music. The opportunity to compare music side by side with Western and other musical traditions led him to see Filipino music in a different light. Nakita ko ang Philippine music on an entirely different light, and I decided, wow, this is this is fantastic music. I want to play this. This is me. I identify with it. I grew up with it, and that's what I've been doing ever since. I've been playing or championing uh, Philippine music. In 1987. The opportunity to develop his music and to be great at it came in the form of a scholarship to the Manhattan School of Music. I chose Manhattan School of Music in particular because there's a guitarist there. His name is Manuel Barueco. He's, he's like the god of guitarists, classical guitarists around the world, even now. Fortunately, I got accepted. I didn't get Manuel Barueco because he was, he was always traveling. I ended up studying with Sharon Isbin, who is now the head of Juilliard Music School. She ended up being very um, important in my technique. Di naging madale para kay Florante ang mag-aral sa Amerika. Mahirap sa loob ang mapalayo sa pamilya. But to find himself and his music, he had no choice but to leave. In 1990, Florante's father died. He had to return to the Philippines at the wake. It turned out to be an eye-opening experience for me. During my father's wake, I saw all the people who were actually influential in who, who I was. There, there was my elementary school teacher, there was my first Rondalia teacher. They're all in my father's wake. And um, I realized, wow, these this, this, this humble people are the people who, who made me to who I am. Isa sa kanyang naging mahalagang obra ay ang theatrical piece na Lanawigan o Province. I grew up hearing stories of Makario Sakai and other rebels who were very instrumental in helping establish independence for the Philippines. So Lanawigan is a tribute to those fringe characters that we don't hear about in history books. Yet, they are just as important. Sa lahat ng klase ng musikang Pilipino, pinili ni Florante na pagtuunan ng pansin ang harana o serenade. He has, in fact, produced a film telling of his search for the old people in the provinces who are the living repository of this dying art. Pero ang mga hararista, iba yung style nila, talagang earnest lang. Because they're so humble, they came from a humble origin. When they sing, it gets reflected, you know, they, they don't try to be showy, you know, but it just sing straight from the heart. Ganito rin klaseng tumuktog si Florante mula sa puso. Florante has this way of playing, so it really comes from the heart and you feel more than just the notes, you feel the intention of the song. Now, his mission is to share that music to the world, modified perhaps, to make it more accessible to different audiences, but true to its Filipino roots. Harana, the endeavor itself, it's dead, but the music still remains. So, uh, I'd like to preserve though, not, not just preserve, but uh, play it in a way that many people will listen to it again. What, what I do is just produce a body of work that resonates in me. And if people pick it up, great. If not, great, I continue doing it because I will probably be playing this whether there's a market or not. Hopefully, the seeds are being sown for more international recognition Philippine music. Florante Aguilar, ang pagmamahal sa bansa na sa musika Nasa gawa. That's our show for today. Tulad ni Florante at Christian, 
sana ay panatili natin buhay ang ating sariling musika at kultura at ipamana natin to sa mga susunod pang generasyon. Meantime, you can visit our website to see more of our interview with Florante and Christian. You can also visit us on Facebook. Thank you po mga kapuso. Sana'y samahan nyo kami muli dito sa susunod na linggo. And always remember, we can all be successful in the land of the free. Just plan ahead, pray hard, and work even harder. At kung ikaw ay nagtagumpay, tulungan mo rin magtagumpay ang hapwa mo. Dahil yan, ang power ng Pinoy! Pinoy.